This is Mike Miles. I'm going to be demonstrating the module I built for the module off second challenge, which was show a list of clickable recent selections next to an entity reference field. So what I've already gone and done is created a Drupal, standard Drupal 7 website. Um, I've used Devel Generate to generate a few nodes. I've downloaded and enabled uh, the entity reference module, created a uh, entity reference field, and made a few references so we have some data to play with. So the first thing I'm going to do is um, enable my module. It's called Previous References. Now, the way my module works is um, for every instance of a field, instance being um, a field for a particular entity type for a particular bundle, it will store settings that uh, for each field instance as well as it will store um, the previous selections for each field instance. Settings are stored in one big cute array in the variables table and previous selections are stored in one big heat array in the Drupal cache table. So my module does not um, create any new database tables. So first thing is um, for the module you have a global configuration you can make. Now what this global configuration does is any time you create a new entity reference field um, it'll will use these settings by default, which you can change when you create the field, but it will pre-populate the selections. And the two settings you have for every field is the number of selections, which is how many previous selections you display, 1 through 10. Um, you can do 0, it's not display anything. I didn't do any more than 10 because I figured that would be ridiculous. I would get free. And the order display previous selections, your choices are do not display any, um, display the last ones that have been selected for this field display the most popular selections for this field, which will also show how many times they've been selected, and the newest selections, which orders them by uh, their creation date. So I'm going to go with the most popular. Let's say configuration. Um, and this right here um, is just a basic, uh, you know, I have a, I use the menu hook, create a menu, and it's, um, I'm calling a system, uh, this created system settings form. Uh, so pretty basic Google stuff. You'll notice I do have a clear caches button that I've created. And uh, it's right here. What that does is um, when the form is submitted or during the validation, uh, it clears all cache data for all fields. Um, so it just makes it easy to work with. So let me show you to configure fields. So for the article content type, I have two entity reference fields I've already created right here. I use different widgets, uh, that's no big deal right now. Um, so when you edit a field or when you're creating a new field and you're choosing the settings, there's a sec new section, a new field set called previous selections, and it allows you to make, um, you know, choose for this instance of this field. Again, an instance is a field for a particular entity type for a particular bundle. For instance, this instance this field is um, uh, related articles for node of type uh, article. So you can make your selection. I'm going to go with uh, most popular. And I'm going to display four. So, seconds. so the way I've added this. Um, these settings here to this form is I've used I've used the form form ID alter hook and I've tried the form ID of that is field UI field edit. Basically I'm checking to see if this field is of type entity reference. I then add my field set. I get the settings that I've been set for it or the defaults and then I just display the fields, add a custom submit function so that I can then uh, update the settings for this field. 
Now when settings for field instance are updated, I then go ahead and delete the previous selections so that they can be regenerated next time the field is viewed. Alright, so I've saved those changes. Let's see what it looks like when I add content. So you see, uh, related articles. So here are the most popular selections for this field. Um, each one has one to it. That's how many times it's been selected. Each one's only been selected previously once. Um, when you click it, it populates the field. Now the way I've done this is I haven't just used a basic form alter function um, on the whole form itself simply because you can't guarantee that you can't go through the form um, array looking at every item on it and try to see if it's field because the fields could be nested in a field set or nested in any other ways and to traverse that whole tree would be a lot of work so I use the field widget form alter which uh, hook which allows you to alter um, the field itself and you don't have to worry about where in the form it is so when an element's being loaded when a field's being loaded for a form I check its type if it's type entity reference I you know I um, get the previous selection that I made for this field now my get previous function is where um, a lot of the work goes into place um, so what get previous does is it loads that big cache array that I have sees it if this field key has is in cache if it is it returns the previous selections for it if it's not then it calculates them and what calculate previous does is it basically um, it gets the settings for this field instance and it builds a query to run on the database um, it gets the ID of the selection to show um, the title of that selection and depending on how you want to order them it does a few different things. For most popular, it counts how many times the selection has been made. It groups by that selection ID, so I get the counts um, added together, and it uh, orders by descending, so that I get the most popular at the top. Uh, to order by last, I order by the change date for the entity, and to order by newest, I order by the created date for the entity. So. And get previous. If it calculates it, then it saves it to the cache so that next time it doesn't have to calculate it unless something changes. And it returns it to here. Uh, to here. Um, now, for this field, I have to get um, what type it is because I know, yes, I know it's an entity reference, but it may be one of three different types based on what widget you choose. Maybe. Um, select field, a radio field, or a text field, and they're handled differently. So real quick I'll show you my render function which actually builds the builds the HTML for this. So render previous um, again it um, it does something different depending on what widget is being used for this field. So a few basic things that display the title correctly. Um, you may have noticed it only shows two here when I selected to display three. That's because only two previous selections have been made. Like I said that before. Um, so if if type select a radio, I want the value that the JavaScript populates to actually be the ID because that's what um, value is passed when the form is submitted. If not, then I want to build this um, title with um, the entity ID, which is what um, the text field, the auto populate uses. I also add some attribute. I'm building links, so I'm adding some attributes. I'm adding a class I can use to target with JavaScript, and I'm also adding some data in it, uh, some data fields, so that I can pass data to the JavaScript, such as um, a custom class I'm adding to the field itself and the value that I want to populate it with, and then I build the links and I'm just building a list I return that HTML. So 
I have the rendered HTML and then based on the field type I add them differently just because the um, element is structured different. For select and radio uh, the element is the actual element so I append these to the suffix of the elephant and I add class that I can target with my JavaScript because finding the ID seemed pretty impossible just because it has a lot of unique things to it. Um, and if it's a text field, I'm actually adding it to the target ID uh, field, which is the actual text field that you see displayed on the form, which is uh, here. So I get the previous selections, or I calculate them and store them. I render them, and then I add them to the field. And all this is from the field widget form alter. Now for the form, that the overall form here, that this field is added to, I have a form alter for that. And what I do is, when a form's loaded, if it has an entity type, I get all the field instances for that entity type. And if uh, I loop through each of the fields, again, this way I don't have to worry about the uh, form structure. And if the field is of type entity reference, here, then I grab um, the field key that I use, which is field ID entity type bundle. I add it to another custom array. If I have entity reference fields on this form, I make sure I can pass along the fields uh, to the submit function, and I add my custom JS, uh, custom JavaScript, and a custom submit function. Now my custom JavaScript, uh, I'm no JavaScript master, so it just adds a Drupal behavior. And when any of my links here are clicked, it stops the default behavior, it gets the field to add the value to, it gets the value to add, and it gets the type of field that the target is. Um, so it's either text field, radio, or select. Uh, text field, or text field, select, I don't know, radio here. Um, because it needs to function differently for each. Um, it really only needs to function differently for radio just because it's structured differently. Um, so this is just some basic JavaScript which then will tell the field which value to use. Um, and that's how the JavaScript functions. Alright, so I have the JavaScript and I had a custom submit. Now the custom submit is there because um, when this form submitted, obviously it's made a reference, and that it's made a reference when I submit this, and so that's going to change what these values are. There, when I make a reference here, that's going to change what these values are. So I pass the reference fields I'm keeping track of to delete previous, which for each field key it gets deletes the cache for that, so that next time the form's loaded, it can be recalculated. Um, yeah, so let me ch let me change this so you can see what the different um, selections are, or the different types are real quick. Go to the basic page. I have entity reference field here. Related pages. So it's checkbox radio buttons. Um, so I'll be able to show you the different uh, widget type. And there we go. So I'm going to show the new selections, the five new selections, and save that. So now, field related page, same field is used by the article content type, but it's of a different instance, so it has different settings. So now if I go and create a new page, basic page, you see we have uh, four new selections, so they were by their node IDs. I make a selection in JavaScript and choose it. Um, so that's basically my module. Uh, real quick, one of the reasons why I chose to have every um, the settings and the cache as one big array is because when you it makes it easy to when you uninstall the module, it just has to delete a few variables and uh, one cache. Yeah, that is it. Thank you.